Hey everyone, it's Brandy, and you're watching Abstract Crafter. Today's episode of Exploring the Essentials, we're going to let's talk about storage. Long-term storage of extra drills, storage of diamond paintings, ones to be worked on, ones that are completed, all kinds of different storage, and um, what to do about that kind of stuff. Not to be confused with current projects. So, if you want to learn more about what I'm talking about, <laughs> then just keep on watching and we will get into that as soon as we roll the intro clips. So, all right, guys, now, <laughs> I know it's a little confusing what it is that I'm actually talking about, and there's a lot to go over, and again, I'm going off script, so we're just going to kind of go by the seat of my pants here. Hopefully, I can make sense, and you can understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about, there's going to be like two different subtopics, and the first one is going to be storing your drills and leftover drills or we're not going to be talking about drills though that are to be kitted up so we won't that will be a whole separate video all about how i kit my projects and what i do to prep to start a new project so that will be another episode this one and that one were neck and neck for a while but this one just edged out the rest and I just wanted to let you guys know that we will be, uh, all of the topics that I had mentioned in the previous Exploring the Essentials video, uh, we'll be talking about all of those. I just wanted to know which one you guys wanted next was more or less what I was asking, I guess. So we will talk about kitting up projects, different ways to do that. We will be talking about drill pens and multi-placers. And then we'll be talking about... Oh, there was something else. I can't remember. Like, finishing. We'll talk a little bit about finishing in this video, so I'm kind of trying to think of some other things. But there there will be several more in this, and this will be a long-term type of video or series. This won't just end after a set number of videos. So as different topics come up, we'll do more. So... With that being said, uh, the two subtopics that we're going to talk about then are drill storage, what to do with leftovers, um, different ways to store them, what I am using, what I'd like to be using, <laughs> some other storage ideas that I've seen on other people's channels, and then we're going to get into storing diamond paintings themselves. I have three ways two of them are kind of similar, three ways that I store my diamond paintings, either ones that are to be worked on or ones that are already complete. So we'll get into all of that and we'll talk a little bit of tips and tricks to do with some of those. And everybody that I talk about in this video, I will give credit to unless it's something that I got on my own. So without further ado, why don't we start with what's right in front of us and the books. And I'm going to move a couple of them. I'll show you all of them. And then I'll demonstrate how I work my books. So we'll start with this one here. This one is my rounds. And this is the one that I'll have a demonstration for. So my books start out like this. And some of the books actually have stuff stored here in the pockets. This one, I don't think I started filling this one yet. Oh, and I'm also going to talk about, that's another subtopic, is how I store, like, supplies that I'm going to be working with in the future. So, like, pens and scissors and tweezers and all of that. I, cause it's such a short little clip. I don't know if I'll include it in this or in the next one. We'll see how, how much I talk and how long this video goes. So, I had mentioned this in one of my videos when I first started doing this. And I just want to start out that this uh, particular way of kitting up projects 
was inspired 100% by Ella from Kick and Cancer's Butt and Diamond Painting. If I can find the video, I will link it. I know I've linked it in other in the other video where I talked more about this stuff. So if it, I mean, it was so long ago. If I can find the video, I will definitely link it because full credit goes to her. Every just about everything, with the exception of this checklist, I got from her. I have three books. It started out as one. It was just this one, and it had both uh, round and square in it. But as I've done more diamond paintings, I've needed more and more space. So this checklist, I'll link this down in the description box because this is a super nice checklist. It's actually a two-page one. The first page has a lot of like more text and like the first part of the DMC like checklist. And uh, I'm going to take this off so I can show you. I'm trying to redesign this for because it's got like the variegated on there and it doesn't really have space here. As you can see I had to alter it for the um, AB gems. Some of those do come with DMCs and now Diamond Dots also has codes for theirs. So I'm not only working on redesigning this but trying to get up a checklist for the ones from Diamond Dots. I'm waiting on them still to come up with their own list. They said that they were going to do it and email people when that was available. I have not heard anything about that yet. So basically all it is with the exception of this column here, this is a variegated flosses. So I don't really do anything with those. I've never gotten any DMCs with those numbers anyway. Um, if you have, let me know because I'd be very interested in that. So. The list, this one starts at 150. I haven't seen anything go below 150 personally, so I'm assuming that most diamond painting companies are going right off this list. I don't know how up to date this is as far as including new DMC numbers. I haven't actually checked it against my book. So that's something that I plan to do when I redesign this, and as soon as I redesign it, it will be available for everybody to download. And so what I do here, and I try to use different colors so that I can, you know, when I'm putting things away, I can kind of differentiate which ones I just marked. Uh, it's not always practical, but it looks pretty. And so, as you can see here, I just make X's in the ones that I have, and I do have it double-sided so that, you know, so it's actually one is upside down so that when I flip it, it's still the right way up this way. I kind of want to redesign the list so it does go this way but I don't know if I'd still be able to fit all the numbers. I don't want it to be more than one page, so we'll see when it comes to that. And I have one for each one of my books, one for round and one for square. So overall, four of these sheets. And I will link this one down in the description. So we'll just take a quick peek through this book. There's not a whole lot to talk about as far as this book goes. Um, I think this was a brilliant thing on Ella's part, and. We're getting a lot of bouncing light. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit. Well, I guess that's better than nothing here. Well, I have to apologize. We're just going to have to deal with the glare. It's just the nature of the beast in the craft area that we are working in. I'll just try to hold this page up a little bit. And so Ella's design mo module, is what I'm calling it, has... These are those uh, sheets that you would use for trading cards. And then these are the three by two inch size baggies. You can get the binders and the sheets, you can get those at, all at Walmart for very affordable prices. I do have these linked in my Amazon influencer page for convenience and I tried to put in the big binders, the three inch binders, and that's actually a really good deal but I could only find them in white. Um, the baggies you can get at Walmart for a dollar for a hundred of them. You can get them at Hobby Lobby for I think around three dollars for I don't remember if it was 200 or 300 It was a lot. And they are better quality than the Walmart ones. Um, these ones here are the Walmart ones, and the zipper on them are a lot thinner. And this part up here is thinner, and they tend to wrinkle and stretch a lot more. You can see that. The uh, ones from Hobby Lobby here are a little bit thicker. Let's see. We'll 
we can get them next to each other for you. So you can, I mean, it's really hard to tell because of the dang light, but they are thicker and they open nicer and they don't tend to stretch as much. So up here is a much thicker plastic than the rest of the baggie. And when you pull them open, you don't get them stretching and pulling as much. So I do recommend the ones from Hobby Lobby a little bit more. I haven't bought them from Michaels yet, so I can't really comment on that. Um, whereas these ones from Walmart, it's really thin on the top, as thin as the rest of the baggie. It's the same thickness and material, so there's not a whole lot with that. So what Ella suggested in her video was putting the numbers on both sides of the baggie so that when you flip the page over, you are always aware of what number you have going on there. And with these little pockets, it, it's pretty perfect for that. So you can see it's on both sides of the page there. As far as multiple dye lots, I just keep them separate in different baggies. This is something that I plan on going through my DMC checklist. And it's hard to tell in this light that they are in fact different dye lots. This light is driving me nuts for this project, I'm telling you right now. Let's try to go over here. And now my camera's like having a conniption because it doesn't know where to look. Let's try to focus on that. There we go. So you can see very clearly that they are one is darker and one is lighter. So that is something that I am working on and there will be a video coming up with how I separate out dye lots. I just tend to overanalyze it and to, like if it is close to a couple of colors that I tend to struggle a little bit on that. So I used to keep diamond dot rounds with this and I stopped doing that a while ago because it just got too overwhelming and I'll actually probably combine my diamond dots with the DMCs if I can find matches. And so here I have empty baggies because these are kits that I am working on or going to be working on soon and I just made the space because unfortunately at this point every time I have a new kit I have to go through and it would make sense yes to just put them all in there like these ones are and have them separate but it's a lot of work and with 400 plus DMCs I just haven't had the patience to sit down and do that yet Plus, I don't have near as many rounds as I do squares, so there'd be a lot of empty space. But that is something that I will probably do in the future, just so I know exactly how many bags. And so if I, the only reason that this isn't the most ideal is obviously I have two full plump bags of 310. And if you stack them on top of each other like that, then they just fall out when you turn the page. Or they want to fall out. I do have some that are fuller than this, so I just typically put them in separate pockets and these ones the more you open these little slots the more the baggies tend to slip out when you're turning the pages um i did for a while there keep little pieces of nope see this one's full and this one's not quite full i did keep little pieces of dryer sheets in them but i just don't like the way it looks so when i get new numbers i just take them out no point. I just, I, I, it doesn't, it's not bothering them. I just don't like the way it looks. So even if my dye lots are very similar, I still keep them separate. It's just an OCD thing. I wish I could just combine them all. That would be the most ideal thing. But I just fear that what if they're not the actual proper DMC code. So I would like to just go through and get them in the proper one. And so sometimes I don't like like this one. Literally, there's like, what, eight left in there, and I still keep them. Sometimes I wonder why <laughs> I do that, but hey, it's, I have 453. If I ever need some extras, I got six or eight. <laughs> so I was trying to get to some spots where I have multiple baggies for different dialogues, but I think that's going to be more prevalent in the squares. And so obviously, as you see, you go through, and I usually do have a couple extra sheets in the very back, but I decided to take them out, or I used them all, so now I only have one extra sheet, so I'll be needing to buy more. That's another reason I don't just put blank, blank baggies in, 
just to start off with because it's cheap when you're buying one or two packs not so much when you get more than that and so the only other thing that I keep in here oh wow I just noticed that can you see that is it noticeable the top is cream and the bottom is white those should be in with the 3865s I think well no they're kind of lighter than that but they're not bright white I don't know how I didn't notice that right when I put them in there silly me Oh well, it, it is what it is. I'll probably separate them at a later time. So I do keep my ABs in here, and so far these are all the extras that I've, I've got. I got, and these are the diamond dot codes on them. I would like to go through, find the proper DMC color for the under, for the actual base color, not the coating color, and include that as well, like I did on this one. It's A52, and... 5001 is the diamond dot number so I do have a few of those I have obviously white pink yellow I have this really beautiful cream that looks kind of pale yellow in this light and then I have and I know those look pretty similar but I'm hoping that the camera will differentiate them enough because this is an orange right here and this is like a red orange and then I do have green and baby blue I'm hoping to get more colors I'd like to have them all, honestly. And then once I do, I plan on using them on my own and just switching out colors when I feel it's appropriate. Because there's so many times I've done paintings where I'm like, well, it'd be nice to have that. Um, in a AB. And so it'd be nice just to switch them out as I feel. And I wish that there were squares with AB gems. So that would be kind of nice. I would like to... I've said it before, but I would like to design some kits that have a mixture of all the style, like regular AB and rhinestone. So I just wanted to show you quickly what I do when I go to put these away. Um, so I have these, I buy these in, at Walmart and you get about 500 some for, I think it's like, it's under $3 at Walmart and there's 25 of these on a sheet. And I had this one just cut. So these two are from the last kit that I did. And I ha it has the DMCs on there. So this one I know I already have. And this one I do not have. So I would write the numbers down. And then I'd put them on the baggie. And then I'd put them away. But because I know I already set this up. I would just go. And they are already checked off on my DMC checklist. So I would just go to where I have that baggie already, right there. Just simply open it up and drop them inside. And now I have an empty container. And so when I, I like to get them as airtight as possible so I just kind of do the toothpaste method and I just squeeze down to get all the air out. I use my thumb on the bottom. There's not very many in these so it doesn't work. It's not really all that much necessary but I usually put my thumb on the bottom, take my other hand and pull up on that and as I'm doing that it will close that little zipper for most of the way and then I just run my fingers over it again and then you just kind of flatten it out and it also helps to keep them from popping like the squares more so than the rounds where they'll stick up and kind of indent the bag so then it just goes right in there now 3721 what I would do with this one is I would go and find where 3721 is and I would try to compare them through the bag and I can it kind of looks like this one is a lighter dye number or a lighter color like the dye lot might be off so sometimes even putting them on top like putting a couple on top of the baggie and you can see that these ones have more red in them, so the color is off. If I'm still a little bit unsure, putting them in the baggie themselves will give you a good hint at that. And so I'll just dump them all in the baggie. Get in there. Join your friends. Dump the rest in. 
one stuck on the back of my finger there. This is a pain if they are staticky. I've, that's why there's dryer sheets in some of them. So I got them in the baggie, and then what I'll do is, because sometimes they will look different in the baggie than outside of the baggie. So then I'll just kind of line them up and see if they look close. And you can see that they are two different dye lots. So then I just go ahead and I put stickers on um, even if there's multiple bags. So every bag gets a sticker. I didn't end up needing the 816. I just kind of wrote it down to show you. So then I just try to put it on as center as possible, put it on both sides, and then it doesn't matter if I put which one I put in front, which one I put in back. It doesn't need to be more full than the other. And I just slide it in and keep on going. Now, for some people, this is close enough in a color that they would just combine them, but I'm that anal and I can't do it. Because one dye lot might match the painting that I need the leftovers for, which is pretty much the only reason you keep these is for your own backup in case you run out or don't get a certain number. I've had that happen only twice though. Once where I ran out and needed to pull from my stash and the other time I just was missing two colors and I was able to pull them right out of my stash. And this one got out. So I have seen, I have done, I did storage one other way, and then I have seen it in one other way, so we'll talk about that now. And I'll show you a couple other ways that I have seen extra diamonds stored. Let's move those off. And there are some other kind of labels. I am trying to find something a little bit different than what I am using, because these ones don't have really great stick. They do fine on this baggie, but for the most part, I always... Like if I'm using them, like on my containers, I didn't use it for this project, but I always have to put tape on it as well. And that kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, I am looking for something a little different. Now I've gotten different labels like these ones I got with some storage containers that I ordered. And these are really good and sticky, but they're almost too sticky. And then I got these ones from Evermoment. They're a little bit longer, and I can actually cut these in half and get two labels out of them. But I just use these for different projects since they're different sizes than these. I like consistency as much as possible. I guess those are the same. They're just thinner. So uh, let me quickly show you the other binders that I have. We won't go through it as much in depth as we did with this one, but... So this one is a two inch, I believe. It's either two or two and a half. I have this one laying around, so I can't really comment on how big it is. It might say right here, but no, it doesn't, of course. Um, this is a three inch binder for my squares. So yeah, it's probably a two and a half. So two and a half is good, three is better. So this one here, that's another thing I don't really like about these is they tend to slide out the top. Mostly when they're full. So again with this one I keep in here all my extra uh, cover papers. I have some that I cut up for different purposes. I kept a little clear cover in case I needed that. I do like to keep them when they're in pretty decent condition. I like to use them as somewhere to rest my hand when I'm diamond painting or to replace um, the clear cover or if I rip um, my other paper on a you know if, it ha if the project ha already has an opaque cover so I like to keep those handy and I try to keep them as many as I can I had just started using this for extras I do have another binder that is full of them so again with this one I did the same thing with this one as I did with the rounds and I just double sided it so that you could see it each way. Uh, now this one has a few different papers in it. It's got some more of these extra sheets and this is what they look like. So you can see they're just divided. I have seen business card style in which you slide them in differently. So these are top loading pockets. 
the business card ones are side loading I don't know if that would be better or not so it's not something I want to really invest in to try different at this point so I'll quickly touch on this but this is going to be more go I'm going to go over this more in depth in a different video so I just printed these one of these was printed off of my printer and one was printed from my husband's printer at his workplace and this doesn't really cover all of them. You can see it only goes to 11, and I do believe there are 20 rows. Yeah, there's 20 different sections. And this one only went to 11 for some reason. But I did print those off and keep those in the front here. I did actually use these at one point, and I still do from time to time. So, again, my squares are, obviously I've done more squares, and I have a lot more leftovers than this one. And this one has a lot more of the fluctuation in dye lots, I've noticed, than pretty much any other, um, well, obviously, than any other, like, rounds. <laughs> so, like, here's a good page with a bunch of dye lots. So, so, so this was, I had this set up for a different project and didn't remember. And so it's just an extra baggie for, and that one's almost full, so I just kept it in there. But like this one, 30, 33, those dye lots are very obvious. One is more peach and one is more cream. So I know for sure that those are going to be end up being two different DMC colors. Um, 30, 42 is another one where one's very light, one's very dark. So it's going to be no doubt that that is multiple I notice more often with the creams and the blues where I'll get multiple dye lots. I know I have a couple that have three, sometimes four. So sorry, my camera said I was done when I wasn't. <laughs> so I was saying some of these will have multiple baggies in them. Um, I know I have a couple that have three or four. That's how I know it's time that I need to start looking at the DMCs and seeing where they actually go. And it's mostly with browns and greens and the creamer, the creamer, the more cream colors that I've noticed that in. I'm trying to find one that has a whole bunch so you can see all the different dye lots that I've come across. Like 898 is one, that was 838, sorry. So here we go. Here's one that has three very distinct dye lots in it. And it's so hard to tell. I'll try to put them lightest to darkest so I mean this one is very obvious this is like a chocolate brown and this is more like a raw sienna and then this one is more in the middle now these two do look very similar so you could probably mix them but until I look at my DMC chart that's just I once I look at that if they don't match any other color more closely then I will mix them and in it for some people, it, they like doing that because it makes sense and they can have a little bit of more dimension on their painting. So, all right, let's get this shut and I'll just quickly show you the other two books that I have for storage and then we'll get into diamond painting storage. Because Oh, and then I wanted to show you two other methods of storing your diamonds besides the way I do it. So this book, I ended up taking out of my rounds. This is all whoop, upside down <laughs> and I'm throwing colors around now so I'll have to put these guys away. Um, so this is the, I just put a couple extra sheets in this one and this one is more where I put my special gems. So I got a page and a half of special gems and I keep those all in here and then my rhinestones are right in the front here and I do try to keep them in DMC order or in the because these ones were matched to DMC chart and I haven't checked to make sure but for the most part I can tell and I do have about two pages of those and then now these are all diamond dots and any other company that diamond dots produces for or there is two projects in this book that when I got them, they didn't have any DMC codes associated with them. So I did put them all together. So these are diamond dots and unknown DMC numbers that need to be assigned something. One way or the other, whether it be through diamond dots or through that. And all I did with this one is I tried to go in rainbow order. And I tried to put the diamond dot numbers first and then go lightest to darkest after that. So in some cases, darkest to lightest. <laughs> 
it just really depended on my mood, I guess. And so, I just want to get these ones put away wherever they go. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you don't have anything written on the baggies where they actually came from. And I'm guessing they came somewhere from the back. Yep. And this one goes there. And again, with these ones, I'll probably still keep them in here because diamond dots are 8.5 millimeters, whereas most traditional diamonds are 8.3 millimeters or whatever the difference in those are. So this one is special gems, diamond dots, and rhinestones. And then the last book I have, we don't need to go through this too much, but this is just how I organize all of my DMC or my inventory sheets, sorry. And this is like, if it doesn't come with one, I will make one. Because I used to keep really detailed notes, like I did here, on the actual DMCs. And that was at the advice of somebody, I don't remember who gave me that advice. Or said that that's what they did on their DMCs. And I, so I, I didn't always do this. You can see here that they're not double-sided. But as I kept going... I did start double siding them so that I could see similar reasoning with the diamonds. And so like this one is one that didn't come with an inventory sheet and I just made one of my own. Uh, I stopped doing that a while back and started just uh, making copies like, like I did with these two Huacan ones. And these... Are, or for the most part, in the order I got them in the mail. Not always. Sometimes I just slide them in wherever. So, and like with the Leisure Arts, what I did is I just copied the chart that was on the canvas. And this was a picture I cut off the box. And I always just try to now just put the price, um, who made them, the name, the size, and the colors. And what style um, beads they are. With Diamond Art Club, I try to put down the SKU number on it. I don't know why. So if I get the multi-packs, I'll just line them up like this, like I did in this one, and put all the inventory sheets together. And then here's where I have a lot more smaller pieces cut up. And those are just for my hand, for the most part. And then I do have, I have my uh, Heaven and Earth Designs, the uh, floss usage charts for those so that when I want to order. I got this from some group I was in so you can kind of get an idea of what the sizes equate to. Um, it doesn't, I don't ever really refer to that anymore. And that's all that is in this book. In the beginning of here I just, I will keep extra well, my labels for my Elizabeth Ward containers and then these are just sheets of projects that have not been kitted up or that I had extra sheets for so like this one hasn't been kitted yet I keep anything related to oh, that's in the wrong pocket related to diamond painting in here if I've ever made laminated um, sheets laminated pictures I try to keep those up here if I didn't need them this was just something I had got in the mail I try to keep the envelopes of stuff I got from from you lovely people. I keep all the envelopes in there. So it's just random stuff that doesn't really have a home anywhere else. Uh, I'll show you the other things I have for storage ideas and then we'll look at diamond painting, how I store them. And I promise that won't be as long as this one. So I am going to pause you while I grab and organize the other containers. Okay, so two more examples of how you could possibly store your leftover drills. This one is courtesy of Stitcherista. She has a beautiful system if you have the space for it. Uh, I don't have the space, but this would be a beautiful way to store my drills. Is using these craft mates. You get quite a few, and you can see here I have two things kitted up and ready to go. So each one of these has seven and you get eight, so 56 containers total. And you got to think there's a little over 400 DMC numbers, so possibility of that many. And I think she actually 
some places will sell extra drills or sell a variety of extra drills. And I think she did that. I think she went ahead and she has backups for every single color possible. And so she has a bunch of these and she got them on a really good sale, I think. There was a point in time when they were on sale for close to, I want to say between $5 and $8. Otherwise, they retail for $20, between $20 and $30. So if you had the space available, that would be a beautiful way to store your drills and you would just use something to put right here like I believe she does and then she'll put like round 150 to whatever the NDMC number is so that is a beautiful way to store your drills and I know that's what Stitcherista does I would love to rummage around her craft room <laughs> the way I used to store my drills was in Containers like this are similar. I have bought a bunch of them from like the dollar store and um, Michael's and I, this was actually my very first extra drill storage when I had only done diamond dots. They only fit Probably about 600 to 700 drills though. So I was quickly running out of room and This has 28 containers. So again, it's kind of I mean it's smaller than this But you also don't get to put as many in there as a craft mate one would fill. I mean, you can fit a lot in those craft mates. So this was how I, my very first storage container, and now it's for, I use it for kits, obviously. It's kitted up for uh, one of my Saner Direct ones, and I didn't separate my drills out enough. See, obviously these didn't all fit, so I just put them in little baggies. <laughs> hey, you do what you gotta do when you gotta do it. And then, this would be another awesome way to store drills. You get 24 in each one of these, and you can fit quite a bit in these Tic Tacs. This is something I just kitted this up. This was my tie-dye sunflower that I got on Amazon. That was the first episode of Project Amazon. But this would be a really nice way to store leftover drills too, because you can see you can fit quite a bit in there. I believe you can fit close to a thousand in here. So this would be a really good way to go as well. Uh, if I when I have the opportunity to have better storage, I probably would buy these wholesale and just go to town. Uh, right now you can get them for between 5 and $10 depending on where you buy them. I think I've even seen them as low as $3. Um, you could also get them at Michael's with a 50% off coupon. So those are just a couple other ways that you can store uh, different drills. Uh, my dream storage would probably be these Tic Tac containers because they take up minimal space and you could get a whole lot. The Craftmates, they would definitely, you'd almost need a bookshelf amount of space, but it is really good if you have a ton of extra drills. So, I'm going to have to go to hand filming and I had said we might talk about some other materials, but we're going to actually move that stuff into the next video when we talk more about kitting up diamond paintings. We'll talk about or even in the drill pen one, where there's not as much to, to discuss as there was with this one. So I am going to have to go by hand, so I might get a little shaky. But a couple of things that I will show you before we do that is um, whenever possible, I use the self-checkout, so it's kind of easy. When I buy clothes from Walmart, Target, or any other place that uses these types of hangers, I will save these because they have really nice rubber on them, so they're not gonna damage your diamond paintings. So these I really like for smaller ones, and I have an example here for you. So this is my Saner Direct, and it actually is holding two. So you could probably hold quite a few with just one of these hangers. Um, I just kinda take the size thing off. They usually pop off pretty easily, and that's upside down, so sorry. And so then you can just hang it, and I use these for the ones that I have coming up to do next. So these would be the next two that I am going to diamond paint on. I also use them for um, ones that need to be filmed post for post reviews. So they can hold quite a bit of weight. So I like those. I also save these ones. I don't like these ones as much. They do have the rubber, they don't have the rubber inside. And so these little ridges will um, pinch your canvas and leave marks on them. 
So I only use these for larger paintings that I'm waiting, that I'm either working on or waiting to do a poster view on. And I have some examples of that. Well, I don't have any examples of this style. So I'm also working on Sylvanas. So I go and working on her and um, trying to get these saner direct ones done for that I had got sent for review. I try to get my the ones that I get sent for review done first before I work on my own projects. And so I also these are my favorite hangers to get the black ones. They do pinch your canvas as you can see right there, but you know that you can get that out fairly easily. And if you would just move it over a little bit and you don't keep it on there long term like I have been, it works. But I prefer these ones because the hanger actually swivels. So you can hang it in this direction or this direction, obviously, or this direction. So whichever way you need it. And I, I really like having that option to be able to hang it like this off of a shelf or whatever it is that I'm working on. So just as some little freebie type storage ideas for diamond paintings either like I said though I only use these on ones that I'm working on or ones that are going to be that I'm going to be working on soon so now I am going to oh and <laughs> here's my generic way of storing projects so I store my diamonds that are to be kitted that I don't have um, containers for like I had showed you I put them in baggies and uh, like this and these ones you can't write on. Well, you probably could if you wanted to. I, I used to. I don't anymore because I try to reuse them as much as possible. So I just started putting what they are and how many colors they have. So when project when containers become available, I'll know which ones to kit next based on how many colors they have. So this is just all my projects that need to be put into kits. <laughs> it's pretty full. I need something a little better. I did have... Uh, one of those totes like this, these shoebox totes, but those take up a lot of space as far as storing kits go. And that will be in the next video when we talk about kitting projects, so we'll get into that more then. All right, I'm going to take you down now. I'm going to show you two ways of storing your diamond paintings, either current projects or projects that you have completed or need to complete. So, forgive the shakiness. I will do my best to not shake on you. Okay, so let's pause while I get situated for that. All right, so here we go. So here are the two ways that I store diamond paintings besides those hangers that I just showed you. Uh, we'll start here, because this is what I did first. I got this idea from Ella too. Can you tell I watched a lot of Ella before I started my channel? <laughs> Thanks, Ella. Um, so these portfolios, I think she used cardboard boxes, and so I just kind of made it my own by doing it this way. I got two, there is a video up for this, so I'll link that, but there's, and forgive that, the dog's water bowl is right in front of it, and it splashes a lot, so ignore the ugly. Um, so what I did is I made little handles out of duct tape for them, and it's just the poster board that has the foam in the middle, so it's a little thicker, and I just kind of put this tape around the edging. It's not ideal. The tape doesn't really like to adhere. This is just dollar store duct tape. Uh, this is good duct tape here, though, actually. One, no, this is the dollar store one. This is good duct tape. This is a duck brand duct tape, and it still has a hard time sticking to this. And so I put a little Velcro. Uh, it's going to get loud. And I'm doing it one-handed. So these I found I didn't really care for. There we go. In the end, because they fall apart so easily, so I'm going to try to back up as best I can. And so I used two poster boards, taped it inside and out. And this, I have two of these portfolios. This one was supposed to be for ones that I'm going to do poster views on, and that was before I got my collection of hangers, so I just use the hangers now. So my other portfolio is quite full and so this just has all my completed ones in there I used to have one for completed ones and one for incomplete ones and the holo um, holographic separator was for the end of the month completed projects one which I don't know if I will continue that series yet so 
Uh, you'll have to let me know down in the comments if you even like that series. I don't get a lot of views on it, and it's a lot of work. If people ain't going to watch it, then it's kind of not worth all of that extra effort. So you'll have to let me know. But I do, I put Velcro on both sides. And then I do put a little up at the top. But it's all dollar store stuff, so it never actually stuck down. So this is the one I think I made on camera. No, this one I made on camera. And as you can see, it's so full that the tape won't stick anymore. Which is just unfortunate. It's going to get loud again. But this is my first collection of completed projects. So there's quite a few in here. It ended up being able to hold a lot. So you can see these are all completed. And I can't even like feather it out enough to show you all of them. But So I tried to put them biggest to smallest. So I mean this, is, this does work. Um, a better option if you're willing to spend the money is to get an artist portfolio. You can get them in plastic, leather, pleather, all different kinds of materials. And I think that would be a better option for storage like this. Plus it's going to zipper on all sides versus the Velcro. Uh, and it won't fall apart like this one is. <laughs> so I mean obviously I can easily repair that with more duct tape. But I don't know that I will. I might just splurge and get the bigger portfolios which I know is what Donnie uses so next up and the last thing that we're going to touch on is and I did mention this in my in-depth supply video is the six rung hangers that I have here um, they're really nice these turn they call them trouser hangers or skirt hangers and if I turn this guy over you can see it's got six different rungs on it Two clips each so you could ideally put like I have here two different diamond paintings there but you can hold I think the most I've done is three on each rung uh, unless they're the little ones then you can get a lot more like six I think depending on the size of them and these are fully adjustable let's see I'll just the only thing with these is that the clips are rubber and this is very difficult to do one-handed, so bear with me. So these little clips here are rubber, and they do, if they're plastic coated, some of these canvases have a plastic coating on them, it will pull that off, and I'll show you an example of that in just a second here. But these clips are adjustable. They can go back and forth, so you can get them on any size canvas that you want and some of these I have three sets of these most of them have two some have three hooks on them let's see if I can MacGyver this again and they're very stiff to open that's the other thing that I don't really like too much about them but One nice thing about these two is if you have some that are a little bit wrinkled, not so much so that you have to iron them, the weight of the other diamond paintings above it will kind of help it to flatten out. So this one has just got a bunch of really small projects on it. There's the forest library. We got the woodpecker on there. Um, wolves in love. And these next ones you haven't seen yet, I don't think. And then the sunflower one is on this one. And another one you haven't... Oops, that was my shirt. Another one you haven't seen yet is underneath that. And so I try to... When I need to, I try to put them on there so that they can be weighed down. Um, and that was just a little sneak peek of the ones that you're going to see. It, the final two episodes of Project Amazon. And so... On this next hook here, I have this one is my more larger paintings and when I can like this is diamond dots and it's nice because you can flip them up like that so they do fully flip all the way around the next two are the diamond art club ones I try to keep them together when I can and here's my big custom that I am still afraid to work on because oh my god intimidating uh, that's one that you haven't seen yet. I got my Ever Moment ones here, and this would be a good one to show you what can happen. Because these have a really 
thick plastic coating on them and it didn't seem to I think it was on this one underneath I probably already covered it up with tape because it had pulled the plastic off but usually because you can see how shiny it is typically that rubber will pull off the uh, coating and you'll be stuck with just a little line right there where it should have I'm just gonna move these instead of trying to clip them right now and then my beautiful one that I got as a gift from Donnie and my Halloween one that is a work in progress so um, ew, looks like something got on that one can you see it the dirt yummy One more little hanger rung and I'll show you. It has more of my medium ones. Oh, this is not easy to do one-handed. And you can see how badly the Diamond Art Club ones discolor. That's pretty gross, huh? It's all yellow in comparison. Gross. So this one here has more of the medium projects. So I have one for large, one for small, and one for medium. This one's got my mandala. And my cute little um, yarn-haired girl. I, I think she's going to be coming up in the future as far as something I work on. And then we got here my Lisa Frank one. So even though those are two different companies, I do try to keep them together. We still have the one from Daz. I haven't done that one yet. And Diamond Dots. And to me, they were one and the same. So I put those ones together. And then we just have Haunted House and... Um, Princess Mononoke. Mononoke. Um, I try to put them in order in which I think I'm going to do them so I don't have to fuss with them too much. But um, So I'm going to put you back up on the tripod and wrap up this video. So alright guys, so as you can see I have a lot of different ways of trying to store diamond paintings and drills. Um, as far as recommendations, as far as what kind of systems I prefer, it's, I really like the Tic Tac idea. If you have the space, the casemates, because they're built to last and they can hold a lot. Um, these ones I don't recommend so much, or anything similar size, or anything really with a screw cap like that. They have those ones that are more like pots. Um, and they're more flat. I don't really recommend those because they, they're very inconsistent in quality. Even if you spend the money on them, they don't tend to last. The, the threads on them, on the caps, tend to come loose and I can just pull them apart. And that happens with the big ones too. Like, they seem to go on tight, but you can still pull them right off. So I don't really like those ones. So for that reason, I don't recommend that. Maybe if you don't have a lot, it's a good way to start. Um, for storing diamond paintings, I do recommend a portfolio of some sort for ones that are completed that you want to work on. Even the trouser slash skirt hangers are a really good option if you want for your completed ones. But keep in mind, those are going to be a lot heavier, and so you won't be able to you won't be able to like double it up or anything like that. And it could bend the actual hangers themselves that way. So, but I do recommend those very highly for somewhere to keep your projects nice and flat. It helps the weight on top, helps flatten the ones underneath. It can hold a lot more small ones. So like my one with large, I've doubled them up so I can fit 12 large ones. On the medium one, I probably have tripled up on some of them. So I would say that could probably hold 20 to 24 at max. And if you're just doing small ones, then you could probably get probably close to between 30 and 40 paintings on one, if it's small. I do recommend saving these types of hangers just for projects that you're working on. Um, just to kind of, if you get them off of a table if you need, or... If you're working on other projects that aren't diamond painted related, diamond painting related, that kind of thing. Uh, I do really like, even though I don't like that my bags fall out and that you can only hold so much, I am very fond of my 
books, my three ring binders and baggie system. I really do like that. I put a lot of work into that. So it, I'm, I am quite fond of it and it won't be easy for me to make a switch. Uh, so th I hope I was able to help you in some way. I know we talked a lot more about diamond storage than anything else, but that seems to be the biggest thing people ask about. Uh, I do th highly recommend having some sort of backup system. It will save you a lot of headaches if you were to run out of some or if you didn't get some, especially if you order from AliExpress, then yes, you can still get some from the seller, but they don't put a lot of priority on sending that kind of thing out. So you could be waiting twice as long as you did for your diamond painting to arrive to get those backup diamonds. Um, so it's nice to have somewhere you can borrow from in the meantime, and then when those ones do arrive, if they arrive, then you can just replace them in your storage. So I do highly recommend saving. Maybe you don't want to save all of them, but save a good amount of them, between 50 and 100. I just don't see any sense in throwing them out when there's so many other things that you could do with your leftover drills besides that. And that's something that will be in the next video. So now... Again, we will work on all of these videos, but I want your input on what we should do next. I'm guessing it's going to be how to kit up projects, different ways I kit my projects. As you can see here already, there's three different ways that I've kitted my projects. So I have many ways that I like to do it. And not only that, but this is another system I use. So let me know what you want to see next. Are we going to talk about drill pens and multi-placers and other accessories like that, like drill placing accessories. Do we want to talk about kitting up projects? Do we want to talk about other things? Oh, that was my low battery reminder. Sorry about that. We'll have to wrap this up quicker than I thought. <laughs> um, knocked me right off track. So I'll put a poll again up in the eye for you guys to vote on to let me know what you want to do next but we will cover all of these topics i do promise that um this like i said this will be a long-term thing we'll come back to it we'll redo some videos as i find other things useful so let me know in the poll or leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see more in depth on and uh with that i will let you go so have an awesome day have fun diamond painting have fun crafting, <laughs> have fun doing whatever it is that makes you happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.